All right, let's, let's talk. We're here to talk. We're here to have a conversation. Um, I'm going to ask Harmony to ask me as many questions as I ask you, <laughs> um, because that's the way a proper conversation should go. And I, as some of you may know Harmony. He uh, grew up here in Nashville, went away for a while, and then uh, returned. And he's been back in town for how long? 10 years, 15 yeah. years? Something, yeah, um, and I, that's something that we'll talk about, that idea of going away and coming back, because I think that's something that happens uh, with increasing frequency. I just met somebody outside who had been away for 15 years and had just moved back, and I, I think it's a really interesting thing, this, this idea of the, of the allure of place and, and the nourishment that you can get from place. Um, so maybe we'll chat about that a little bit. But let me first um, say that when... Uh, when I arrived here in Nashville, people were sort of talking a little bit about Harmony Corinne uh, as a filmmaker, and I really didn't know his films. I was not a big, uh, you know, whatever you would call it, an underground film buff. Are you an underground filmmaker? Commercial. Were you? <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, I said, okay, well, that's interesting. And then I saw his work at an art fair in Miami some years ago. And uh, I thought, okay, well, this is like a filmmaker who makes paintings. Just like, you know, in this town, there are a lot of musicians who make paintings. And, you know, but, but there was something about the work that was really, I found really sort of compelling. It was, it, was, uh, it was loose, it was chaotic, it was uncontrolled, but still there was a really compelling aesthetic, a sensibility there that I was drawn to that wasn't what I expected. And so, um, so I kind of followed the work over the years. And um, Harmony did a, a collaboration with an artist whose work I also admire, Rita Ackerman. And this would let me show you something by Rita, um, by actually Rita and Harmony together. They, they did this collaboration. When was this? Uh, it says 2010. Okay, so was that like a one year thing? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, was it like an ongoing process? Or, and, and how did yeah. you guys get, get started on it? Um, Rita's, a, Rita's a, a really good friend of mine, and she's from Hungary, um, and when I first moved to New York when I was a teenager, she was like, uh, she lived across the street from me, and she was just starting to show work. I think she was showing it at the Andrea Rosen Gallery. Um, mm -hmm. She was just one of those people that was always hanging out and I was friends with, and she's a real interesting character. And, um, I think she's a great painter, and and uh, so, but we'd always kind of like I had like a lot of friends back then and relationships. At that time, art was like a real it was a kind of real liquid moving thing that people were playing music. Everyone was a musician. Everyone was a painter. At that point, everyone was making movies, taking photographs. There was no real delineation. You just felt like you can do it do it all. And so Rita was one of those people. She was just like part of the, that scene in the early 90s in New York. Um, and, so, and then this was just like years later when I started painting again. Um, I would just go, when I would go, be in New York, I would just go to her studio and we would just kind of just paint. Or the way you would make music, it would be, or people would kind of make music together. It, would, it was really just free association, working together not really thinking about it too much, using my characters, her characters, painting over each other. And then, um, I guess over the course of a year or two, putting work together, we had, we had made some pretty cool things. And this was a show at the Swiss Institute. And it became a book uh, called Shadow, Shadow Fucks, I think. With an X. Yeah, with an okay. X. With an X. Just, just in case. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it was a really beautiful series. And, you know, I think it, for me, that was like a leap from seeing the early work to seeing that work because there started to be this introduction of color, this introduction yeah. of, of uh, a, kind of a, a pictorial tension sure. there that, that I don't know if it was a result of the collaboration or it was just like growth that you yeah. had as an artist. And, you know, and, and then where you sprung from that, I think, or, or at least where I saw. You know, and so this is all about me, as, as you know. Um, where, where I saw uh, was uh, you started showing with Gagosian. Right. You know, and this seemed really, again, a, 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 a huge jump. You know, there's this yeah. sense of structure now yeah. and appreciation for color and, and not overworking canvases or not heavily working canvases, just kind of this immediacy. You know, to, yeah. what, what happened? How, did, how do you make that leap? 
the, I think these are pictures from my first show with Gagosian uh, a couple years ago. Um, you know, I'd, I guess it's like I, I had always, going back to that thing, I had always made artwork. I had shown artwork even as a kid when I was, you know, in my early 20s. Being around artists at the time, knowing art, you know, um, I think Mike Kelly introduced me to Patrick Painter, who had a great gallery in Bergamont Station, Los Angeles, and I think it was pa Mike Kelly or, or Christopher Wool or someone introduced me, and and they said, "Hey, this guy's this kid is making interesting work," but it was really juvenile and kind of silly, but it was part of where I was at at the time. Like and, juvenile in what way? How do you mean? Well, you know, I was, a, I was probably 20 and it was just yeah. real potty humor and, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, scatological. And it Did Mike was, Kelly like that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Stunned. And, and then so I started to show, I started to have these, these early shows and, um, and then after a little while, I think, I, I, the movies took on a bigger role than the artwork and I started to make the artwork more in private. And it was, became a thing that was like uh, something I kind of kept to myself or I would have small studios make work, not really show anybody. Yeah. And then like uh, five or six years ago, I, I felt like I had probably had an, enough interesting things that maybe it was time. I was, I was more tentative with, the, with getting back into the art world. Uh, getting back into the art thing, and then Larry saw the work and asked me to do the show. So how did Larry see the Larry I Gagosian? Think, how did he see the work? I mean, you I were tentative. You were a little bit. I think somebody showed him photographs. Yeah. And then I. And what was he looking at then? Works like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And his response was pretty. Yeah, it was. It was uh, good. And I had great. I had been waiting really for the right. I had been talking to different people and different <laughs> museums and galleries and things, and I had just been waiting for. I, you know, it just felt right. So yeah, I think it's great the way you sort of ease into the gallery world. We're starting with a minor gallery like, uh, <laughs> like that, yeah, uh, and then kind of you're, you're working your way up, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so how many shows have you had with the Gagosian? Um, probably I don't know, four or five or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's very something cool. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, when when uh, again uh, to get back to sort of my own education or experience of Harmony's work, I felt at some point, especially once we talked about doing a show, and we'll talk about uh, uh, his studio down in the Voorhees building where we where we had some nice conversations um, after a little while. Um, but, but I started realizing, you know, I don't really know this guy's film work that much, you know, and I said I needed to educate myself about that. Um, you know, it's an embarrassing thing to admit, but you know, you can. You, you, uh, not everybody uh, can know everything, um, and so I started looking at the films, and uh, and I started thinking about well, what is the connection? You know, what is the relationship between uh, the films and the paintings? And and it's not like an immediately obvious thing for me. You know, the film. I feel most of you probably know Harmony's work as a filmmaker. Uh, You've seen, you may have seen Kids, the film he made uh, back in the 90s uh, that was uh, uh, work, he working with, with Larry Clark um, and Harmony did the screenplay for that film when he was like 19 years old. Um, it's, it's really a brilliant movie. I mean, it's, it's a little tough to take, um, but it's a brilliant movie and it, there's a, just this aura of cinema verite about it that is really amazing for, for somebody who's just a kid you know, himself. And then going to Gummo and Julian Donkey Boy and all these movies that are, that are uh, you know, rougher and rougher around the edge, I, I would say. But, you know, I started looking at these. And let me, let me show you some stills. Uh, whoop, there's, uh, there's Harmony uh, <laughs> with Chloe Savigny in, uh, in Kids. It's a great, it's a great image. Um, not one that you're, you're responsible for making other than just being there, but it's really, uh, those glasses are, are, do you still have those glasses? No, I think those burn. Those should those should be <laughs> those should be in the uh, museum. They're cool. They're images. cool. They magnified my eyeballs. You, your eyes weren't that big back then. No, no, no. This thing's really hurt. Yeah, for sure. Um, so this is a still from kids, and then a couple of stills from Gummo and Julian Donkey Boy. Wait, that's not. That's not right? No, I mean, that, that, that's somebody, it looks like that's somebody. Oh, that's somebody, <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, it looks like, I mean, it's it cool. It looks like he's, he's, it's rip, not my... he's ripping you off. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, you I, can. I spent a lot of time on this. 
Yeah. Um, one thing I've seen with Harmony is he's a perfectionist. He, he knows he his knows own image. Yeah. So that's... Uh, that's it's like some dude in Antioch. That's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, you know, what... Uh, what I started to do as I looked at these, at these movies was to stop them, you know, just to kind of stop them and then move them forward and go back and look at the images themselves. Because I think the images are, notwithstanding the fact that that's a counterfeit, um, the, the images are, um, are really packed. You know, and, and so I started to think about, well, maybe that is where, the, where for me, a, a beginning point for understanding the connection between the two the two worlds is. Is that like a legitimate response, you think? Um, I think there's a connection, but I also, uh, there's a connection because I make them. Um, I also think there's a, there's a difference also in the work. But um, I think there's like a relationship in that I, I, um, I don't really overthink things. I don't really know where a lot of it comes from. Um, I don't question stuff too much. Uh, images like come to me. Uh, images for the movies, just things that I, I want to see, certain colors, um, certain textural things of, of feelings, colors, t tonally, uh, ambience, um, uh, a kind of a world that I want to set up. I want you to feel like it's like touched you, you've been there, you've it's confused you, it's moved you, um, and, and mostly the relationship between the paintings and the, and the films, I think, is something that I, I try to have, it's like a close articulation. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's a, a kind of, po something that, or it's like be, beyond a simple articulation, something that's more like a feeling. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, or more like uh, a trippy quality. Uh, something that's more tactile and um, less defined, um, like a vib like a vibration or a um, um, like a, a vibe, yeah. you know. And so, with the paintings and and the and the movies, it's it's something like that. It's like what's it's like some, it's also about what's like not there, what's more undefined. Something that's more undefined, um, but. So how do you, what do you mean by something that's not there when you? Well, it's like the thing, like you, I always wanted to write the, the great, uh, like a novel with pages missing in all the right places. <laughs> you know, like it's sometimes it's about like what's missing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the imagination is obviously a, a really important part of, of your work and this idea of invention and surprise, surprise presumably for yourself as much as for yeah. anybody else. I mean, that does seem to be the, the thing that, that drives the work. You've also uh, sort of said in different interviews that you, um, that when you work on a film, you, you, it's like going to war. Yeah. And it's also, and, and the people that work with you yeah. hate it, like hate you. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's probably been true in the, the, in the earlier movies when I was really, you know, and I was just figuring it out and I was really ambitious, ambitious and it was difficult to make those movies and, um, and I felt like that was what I had to do to like to get those images. So it was it was never easy. Like I never really had a particularly easy time making movies, and that's probably why I started to get more into painting in the last couple of years. Was because it was felt nice. It was something that was more um, uh, um, it was singular in a lot of ways. It was I could just go into a studio and just start working and I didn't have to really talk to people or I didn't have to communicate too much or there didn't have to be too much intent. I could just act on impulse. Yeah. And movies, it's different. I still try to do that a little bit with films, but movies, obviously, because just the amount of people involved, it becomes something bigger. It, bec it's a, it is about collaboration. Um, uh, but again, it's like to go back to really, in the beginning, I just wanted to do everything. I wanted to just make everything. Like, I didn't really care about being the best or about being the most technically proficient. It, that, that really never even entered my mind. I really just wanted, I had like a thing inside me and I wanted to just um, create. And so like, you know, if I, saw, if, I, if I saw an opera one time, I would think to myself, I could do that. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And I would just want to make an opera. And if you wouldn't I, worry about whether If I watched some tap dancer on the street, I was like, fuck, I want to do what that guy just did. Yeah. Like, I, I, and I, I just want, but I, I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to interpret it in my own ways, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I mean, you, you feel sort of um, of culture envy in a way that, you know, when people can do stuff or are doing stuff and you think, well, you know, that looks great. And, you know, I, I think that's where the empathy and art comes in. You know, yeah. it's just like that, making that connection between people. And a lot of people feel that and a lot of people don't become a tap dancer and a lot of people yeah. don't, become, don't write operas. Um, and as far as I know, you haven't become a tap dancer written operas. Um, and you know, you, true. You, you have, <laughs> <laughs> you, but you have, I mean, what you're sort of getting at is this idea of, um, of just, uh, of, of pursuing the thing that you want to do, doing the thing that you want to do and not yeah. really care so much about categories. Well, also it was like, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to do it because I felt like we were moving closer to this point in history and time with art where it was ev where basically it was everything. It wasn't enough to be, or it's not enough to be one thing. This is just me. This is just me personally. Yeah. And that I wanted to have my tentacles and everything. I wanted to create a unified aesthetic that's something that was without hierarchy where I could write like a, a poem on a piece of paper or make a, a painting or a film or whatever. And it w was all related. They all had a relationship. That it wasn't about this one being here and this one being here and this being good or this being bad, yeah. that they all kind of spoke to each other and came from the same place, a kind of singularity, a something that, um, that came from the kind of a creative source, a unified aesthetic, a singular idea. Um, to create like a, Fassbender talked about it at some point where he said that his films were like houses, that like some of the movies that he made were like the floorboard and some were like the ceiling and others were like the stove. and that the idea was that you create this body of work and at the end of your life you can live in. And that, that makes sense to me, yeah. you know. But each, each thing that you do has its own sort of limitations and, and boundaries or, you know, if not boundaries, kind of set of things that work. And so right. you have to, you, you know, I think the difference between, between making a painting, the paintings that are in the uh, Gordon Contemporary Artist Project Gallery, and you doing a tap dance in the, in the same gallery, is that you actually, th there's a single-mindedness. There's right. this kind of sense, well, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to do it like casually or right. badly. Or, right. you know, right. you, you may not worry about whether yeah. it's good, but you actually yeah. want it to be good. Yeah. No, you want it to be good, and also what's good for certain people is not, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing of opinion. Yeah. And so, but, you know, yeah, you, I, I'll, you do want to make work that has some type of effect. Yeah. Well, let's go to another slide. Speaking of effect, I love this. Do you recognize it? Uh, yeah, something I did for. <laughs> what are you trying to embarrass? For Urban me? Outfitters, a commercial. <laughs> yeah. At first, you have the fake thing. No. Yeah, well, you know, um, when we were planning our talk tonight, Armin he said, you know, let's not go through the images. Let's surprise. Uh, let's have a surprise and see where it goes. Um, and, you know, but I think I, I'm including this because it does seem, to, yeah. certainly that's, that aesthetic yeah. carries over whether it's yeah. a commercial or not. I do commercial commercials thing. all the time, yeah. Yeah, I, you I do love... like t-shirts and stuff or no. sneakers? What you... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I do everything. Underwear. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I, no I, I do commercial. I, I, shoot, I shoot, do advertisements. I just shot something for the new YSL campaign, I did the Dior campaign, I shot the Steph Curry ad that just came out for Under Armour. I like, I th for me, ads are, uh, you know, I like them. Yeah, uh, you like them because? Because I think that's also part of it. I think that's, a, that's something that hits in a different way. And I like, it's a technical exercise. It's like, it's removed from a, a spiritual, el there's like, an, I don't have, necessarily a spiritual connection to the yeah. to that yeah. but i also enjoy just the artifice of advertisement advertising is interesting to me and so um and it's also just another form of creating um well the uh i remember i was, I was uh, looking at some interview and you said you told a story about somebody who was um I hope it was going to invest in one of your films. And he said, I'll invest in it as long as you don't call it art. 
and yeah. who, so that, what, what film was that? That was actually Bob Shea from New Line, yeah, when I did Gummo. Okay. okay. I, yeah. I was like really a little kid, and I was trying to get m money for that movie. It was right after kids. And then, he, you know, Bob Shea is like a important kind of producer. He used to run on New Line, Fine Line. And so then the, then the film was shown in the Whitney Biennial. And he was irritated. And he got pissed. He was irritated with yeah. that. He's yeah, like, because all like, of a sudden it was art. He was like, no, he said, he's like, I'll, I'll finance this movie as long as it's, it's not art. And I was like, yeah, I hate art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like I, hating art and being an artist. And then huh? I bumped in him four years later. It was like in the Whitney Biennial. He was pissed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that kind of brings up the question, well, you know, where, you know, I know you're trying to talk about uh, uh, eliminating boundaries and having a flow, a creative flow between different mediums and different approaches. Do you think of one thing as being more art than something else? No. Like any of your films more art than, or, or your paintings more art than your commercial no. enterprises? No. Do you even use that word? No. <laughs> I, 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 no. I, uh, but I you, didn't fuss I at, you didn't fuss at me when I used that word about you, though. No, right? no, it's yeah. fine. I mean, I, I'm generally, yeah, I mean, I'm an artist. That's what it, it yeah. is. I mean, um, but it's, it means so much. It means nothing. It means everything and nothing. I don't know, you know. Yeah. I don't, I try not to have, again, I try not to, I think things culturally, I've always just seen things as either interesting or not interesting. Yeah. I, I don't, high culture, low culture, things that are ba base and vile, I still see merit in yeah, uh, a lot of it, and then and then the opposite is true for the other. So yeah, I mean, there's a you've talked about that sense of dirt, you know, that you kind of respond to, and you know, and you just use the word spiritual. Yeah, which I actually see in a lot of your work, although it's not something I've I've heard you talk <laughs> about, and and maybe we can yeah. uh, uh, talk a little bit about that l later on. But you know, one one of the things that was that was uh, interesting to me about this Urban Outfitters ad is that sense of that <laughs> sense funny of sentence, grit, you know, that sense yeah. of, of kind of damaging the surface. Right. And, and when you damage the surface, you right. kind of imply a story, you imply something sure. going on. Uh, you make it look like a found object. Yes. And for some reason, I started thinking about William Burroughs when I looked at this, and then yeah. I started thinking about him more when I looked at some of the other films. And yeah. the way his um, the way his voice, you know, when he's doing something, his voice just kind of hangs in the air. Yeah. You know, it's like a thing. It's like this physical raspy thing. Yeah. And I think that there's something about your work that reminds me of that. Yeah. You know, if it's a film, even if it's a film still, if it's the correct one, um, there's that quality of it being a, a found object. Sure. You know, this, this uh, thing that has a history. Yes. And, you know, it may or may not have a history, whatever history you invent to put into it, but, but I like, I really respond to that, uh, that sense of, um, of archaeology in a way, you know. I mean, do you yeah. think about that as you work, or is it just something that, that is a natural part of you? Yeah, I'm just natural. Yeah. <laughs> part, part of, you know. Uh, again, it's just like uh, energy is tangible, you know. It's something yeah. you, I, you feel. It's like something, and so you you want even something like an Urban Outfitters thing. It's nice if I think, well, I found that picture in a dump somewhere. Yeah. Or, you know, it was buried in the ass of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and I just pulled As it. As so many pictures I just are. Pulled yeah. it out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, let's, uh, let's move from, from dirt to drugs. Dirt to drugs. Dirt to right. drugs, yeah. Um, this is one of your most recent paintings. Right. It's not in the show, but there are several works that are kind of like it in the show. It's from the Phaser series. And, you know, I think with the, that sense that I talked about with, with some of your work is that there's, there's a surface, and then by distressing the surface, you're implying something beneath the surface. Yeah. And I think that that's oftentimes what one sort of associates with a drug experience, especially yeah. with a psychedelic drug experience, this idea of, you know, there's the world, but I know that all these energies, right. these things are flowing right. sort of behind, just behind yes. the surface. I mean, talk about the development. Where do you get an idea? The, the phasers is, is, I mean, it's such a different yeah. thing. Yeah, I was than, trying to make work that had a physical effect. Like, I wanted to make, do a show where when you walked in, you kind of almost fell over. That it, it had this kind of, there was a, it had this like pulse. And when you, see, when you saw them all together, it had this kind of pulsing light. The things that looked like they were carved of color. 
and vibrations and yeah. and even like the um the direction of the paintings the it, it had this kind of um a physical effect it, they're really just patterns that i would just riff on um that that gave me this kind of pulsing uh like a like a sun vibration or something. So a phaser is that's a real thing though, right? That, that's like a musical. Yeah, I mean, or phasing. It was like a technology. Something. Uh, that it just the words seemed to feel like what the paintings felt like. They, there was a connection to maybe there is like a connection to a type of a hallucinatory state or some type of a drug state or tr a, a, a kind of trance. Yeah. Uh, even with the movies, it's the same thing. Where there's a lot of the films have this kind of a looping, a phasing effect um, that I oh, that I always liked. Um, something that becomes more um, it's simple, but it's a kind of hypnotic. It's a hip um, thing. Yeah. And again, I just want some. It just slightly knocks you off your feet. Um, and yeah, I I I did. It's no secret. I was did a lot of drugs, and uh, yeah. and so. That there were some interesting aspects to, it. and I try to put those in the work. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it, yeah, it is no secret, and you, uh, <laughs> but you cleaned up, you know. But I think that I cleaned um, up nicely. You cleaned up nicely. I mean, just look at you. Um, but I think that that idea of you know this sort of world that's introduced to you through drugs and trying to and I, I know other artists who have talked about that you know that uh, that they when they saw that art actually was a way uh, I mean it's not the same thing but it is right. sort of a, a of uh, an equivalent in a, in a sense. Right it really is just about getting out of yourself in some ways it's becoming something it's it's, tra it's a kind of transcendence it's a, it's a really just or an elevation it really is a, yeah. just very simply about something other than your body we, yeah. you know. Yeah which I think a lot of art tries to do sometimes in, in a different way I mean yours is very physical it's yeah. like it's an optical thing where you're where yeah. you can just feel your own sort of pupils quivering as you... Well, because sometimes I think with art, it's really hard. I feel like it's hard to think to talk about, you know. Sometimes talking about it too much, it's, uh, it puts it in a box or something. Yeah. And I, it's a difficult thing. So I, I like making work sometimes that exists more in a, a physical realm. Yeah. Then it's why I don't really listen to music with work. I don't like hearing, like, folk music and stuff. I don't, you know, I don't want to listen to, like, too many words. So the words tell you too much? Yeah, it's just I mean, like... It's, uh, that idea of the blank I don't want to hear all those people's problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's my mic. Yeah. You got the bootleg mic. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption, folks. Thanks. Can, is this audible? Okay, great. Um, my voice sounds deeper. <laughs> <laughs> So that idea, I think, of, um, of that, it, it gets back to that notion of absence and not, not giving it all away, I think, in a way. If you word, music without words, art yeah. without, art without uh, being, that, that's not really subject to analysis. It kind of sounds kind right. of what you're talking about. Of course, you're yeah. talking to somebody who, who makes his living making words about art. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, that's true. You do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I do the opposite. I don't really ask myself anything. I don't really know anything about myself. Don't want to. I just, I really don't care. I just show up. <laughs> just show up and just make the work. And, I show uh, up yeah, and just without toss thinking some about shit it. out there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's. Um, you've said that before. This idea that, you, that you're not uh, a, an inherently introspective person. Um, it's a little, you know, I, I look at the work and I find it thoughtful, but not thoughtful in the way that means that you're sort of telling yourself, so you're spelling out what yeah. you're going to do and you do it. You know, it's a different thing. I, I do, yeah. you know, we, we might talk a little bit about this idea of the call and response, you know, right. that, uh, that you give yourself a situation, you respond to it. We'll, we'll talk about that in a yeah. minute, but let's, let's flip forward. Um, the Kotzer gift is the painting on the right. And uh, those of you who have seen the exhibition who will have seen this in the gallery. It's a, it's a smallish painting. It's pretty packed, pretty pungent, and uh, related to the photograph on the left from, uh, from 
Harmony's film Trash Humpers, which was made here in Nashville. Um, can you talk a little bit about this sort of relationship between you know why you why you made a painting out of, of that, that still, yeah. and then maybe we can just a, a little bit more about your your, um, your thinking here. And the, the painting is called the Kotzer Gift, and maybe you can talk about <laughs> you know some of the some of the people that you were. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, fun, with. it's funny. I don't know if you, I, he's probably not even here, but like, yes, yeah, so that's this guy. He's he lives here. His name's Brian Kotzer. And he wanted a gift. And so I just made that. But then I liked it so much, I kept it. <laughs> and never gave it to him. <laughs> and, and that's why it's called the Kotzer Gift. <laughs> well, that's an awfully sweet story. <laughs> <laughs> that's really the truth behind it. Um, uh, yeah. Well, I, you know, the, one of the reasons, one of the things I wanted to sort of talk about, this is, this is uh, one of the, where if you come into the exhibition and you turn left to go into the smaller gallery, that is where more figural work is and work that I think relates, kind of bridges the gap, or re, re, has uh, uh, images of kind of ghostly uh, faces and figures, but also starts to bridge the gap between that work that I think sort of uh, uh, traces back to early on that idea of finding figures in, in rough surfaces and paint um, and then making that leap to the more abstract, more loopy paintings. Right. So that's kind of what, what that section of the gallery yeah. is about. But, um, but I also just wanted to, to maybe change directions a little bit and talk about working with people in Nashville and, you know, working mm -hmm. with Brian Kotzer, working with other people. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's a whole slew of people who, yeah. you know, there's, there's a great creative community yeah. here. Man, yeah, Nashville was, was and, it, you know, is, is always, is where I grew up. Um, uh, and so Nashville today and Nashville then are two very different places. Um, and so this place, it's a, the city, it's a part of me. It's like, a, you know, it's like looking at your, my, it's like a foot or something. And sometimes your foot, you look at it, and you're like, hey, I got a good looking foot. And then other times you're like, damn, I got to clip those toenails. Yeah, uh, I wish I had somebody else's foot. And so that's kind of how I feel about this city. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've done, well, you've done a lot of really, really intensely creative work here. Uh, we talked a little bit about, the, um, about that idea of, uh, you know, whether it's a real thing or it's an invented thing. That yeah. Southern Gothic, you know, this notion yeah. of, of taking some kind of um, inspiration yeah. from the weirdness yeah. that you see around you. I, so again, like, we'll go back to this what Nashville was and Nashville is. Like, Nashville is to me now, not Southern. That's just, it's maybe southern flavored, you know, like it's like southern scented. But, uh, but to me, it's not really southern, which is fine. It's, it, it's a new, it's its own thing. It's a hyper, it's, it's like LA now or New York, you know, it's like has all these other, you know, all the people from everywhere came. Um, when, when I was a kid growing up here, probably there's people here that I knew from back then, it was a weird place or in a lot of ways, it was a strange place. There weren't a lot of, I don't, there weren't a lot of people here, or um, you, uh, everyone wasn't so self-aware, the, the, the sense of being Southern or the irony, the whole, the whole thing, it was much different. It was, nobody really had anything. There was a lot of eccentrics. Um, and you know, I gra gravitated towards that. I, I grew up in, I mean, went to, you know, public schools here, but sucky schools, but they were great socially, you know? Um, and it was a wild time, you know, being a skateboarder here in the 80s. And like I, like I said, it's, for me, this is awesome to show Fritz because I used to, I was 13, 14 year old kids skateboarding to Legislative Plaza with my friends every day going past this place. And we like to think that the Frist has a huge impact on young <laughs> people's lives. No, it's, it's cool. I used to smoke weed and pass that on the steps. Uh, that was you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, and so, I, you know, obviously I, I, I made, I came back and made Gummo here and I made a couple, and a couple movies here and 
I love it. It's hard. It's hard for me now, though, because a lot of the those things that I, I remember that are so strong in my memory, the feelings, the the people, the characters are like a lot of them aren't here anymore. A lot of the places don't exist anymore. It's still alive in my memory in a lot of ways, the way it used to be, you know. Um, but it's yeah, it, it's like it's strange. So I have it's this kind of b bizarre feeling of like growing up in a place and feeling attached to it and also it not being the place. It's, it's now something else and feeling not attached to it. Um, so it's a, it's a tricky relationship. I left it for a while, came back. Um, at the same time, it's mellow place. It's, um, I, I do have problems with it though. <laughs> yeah, well, it's that, uh Megan and I were talking earlier about that love-hate relationship yeah. that one has with one's own uh, uh, hometown. And sometimes you, if you go back to it and it hasn't changed, it yeah. makes you crazy. And sometimes you go back and if it's changed too much, it makes you crazy. And, you know, yeah. things are going to make you crazy. Uh, but it's interesting. You, you're a person who could, you know, artists live in New York, right? Or artists yeah. live in Berlin or, yes. or London. Um, you could do that. You've yeah. done that. Yeah. Um, uh, filmmakers live in Hollywood. Yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, you know, but yeah. you're not doing either of those things. I never did. I mean, I lived in some. I, you know, I've, I've lived in lots of different places and stuff. But I always came back here. I still have a house here. You know, um, I, it's. I feel comfortable here. I understand it. And at the same time, I sometimes. I mean, really, it it became a little too white for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be totally honest. It, like in the last couple of years, it got real white, and <laughs> and I'm not saying the whole thing, but I was just like, you know, it really gentrified in a way that little lame. <laughs> uh, so I have I have issues with it, but um, you know, what am I going to do? Um, let's go to another slide. Speaking of. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's an interesting topic, this idea, this, this issue or question about race in Nashville and, you know, and it's, it's a very hard one to sort of uh, um, analyze, you know, in, in 20 seconds while we're sitting up here. Um, but I think that, you know, I think that uh, um, our, our cities are still fairly integrated. <laughs> You yeah, know, or segregated, excuse me, uh, Nashville included. Yeah. Um, and it just depends on which part of town you're in, whether it's white right. or not. And so right. you know, that's, 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 uh, you that's know a I'm large saying. part it's of it. White bread. <laughs> 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 um, on the screen now is the Voorhees building. Yeah. And this is where um, I first saw a lot of your work. You know, we ca I came down, when was that? A couple of years ago, yeah. you know, a year ago, something yeah. like that. Um, talk about this building, and, and you, you bought it, and what, what was going on with that idea? So, yeah, it's just a building. It was an awesome building, and turned it into my studio, and it's still there. It's, like, right down the street. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I just fell in love with the building, and turned it, we, like, renovated it, and turned it in, the inside is kind of like a little mini museum, like, studio. Like a mini 80,000 square foot museum, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, or no, comparison, it's, no. our Ingram galleries are 10,000 square No, it's feet. big. It's, it's big, and it's fun, so I can, like, see the work. I can see everything. Uh, it's, it's a great, I mean, that's the great thing about Nashville is that it, you know, it gives you, there's space here, which is, which is great. Um, and, uh, and that's where, yeah, mostly that's where most of the paintings have been made over the last like five or six years. Um, so you bought it as basically as a studio, um, a, yeah, a place I mean, to put I, your I, own art collection. Yeah, and we started putting it, uh, a lot of the artwork that we've collected for a long time. We started putting in there, and um, yeah, it's just it's this kind of undefinable place. I change my mind. I, sometimes I'm like, maybe I should open this up to the public, and maybe it should be its own kind of alternative space, and then that's a lot of work and I, you know, I changed my mind a lot, but it's a, uh, it's cool, but it's all, it's great. It's one of my, it's probably one of my favorite things in the world. It's certainly a very cool thing. And, yeah. you know, when we talked about it, I, I came to visit you and saw a painting by Julian Schnabel and a Christopher Wool. And, you know, it's just like mm -hmm. some, some really 
great things. And you've, yeah. obviously you've got some good friends in the art world and you've, you've built, yeah. a, built a nice collection yourself, yeah. which I think is a whole separate yeah. enterprise. Yeah, it really is. Um, I really, at some point, will probably put it all together and let people come in and check it out. It's, it's nice. Please do. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's nice to have that, that work here. Um, and, and I think I probably will do that. We will, well, Rachel I, I, I will think everybody that. here would love to see that. It'd be fun, man. <laughs> but now uh, you, you, you um, have moved at least temporarily to Miami. You're yeah. kind of back and forth there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live in Miami now. Yeah. Uh, or I go back and forth. Um, so I just like started having fun there. It's cool. You know, a lot of big asses. <laughs> I was going to say something about the ocean, you know, but something... The, the ocean, that yeah. motion. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of seduced by that. Are you, doing, are you working on film projects down there? Or is it, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a couple movies. Uh, I, I, have, uh, I think I'm going to start shooting something in March. Um, a movie will probably shoot there. Um, but, yeah, I've been, wor I've been working on a lot of different stuff. I, uh, more art, artwork and movies and things. Okay. Well, let's get back to art. Cake or Plino? I, I, I think your titles are really interesting. I don't know where in the world they come from. <laughs> you know, and maybe you don't know either. They just sort of yeah. ring, a, ring some kind of chime within the, you. The titles, it's like, it's like I always like, I just like the way certain things sound, and I like the way, like, letters look next to each other. Um, they're not even real words, a lot of them, but I just like, the, I sometimes will just write down words, like, or just let sequences of letters that just look cool to me. Yeah. Um, so most of the titles are that, are just like certain letters and certain orders, certain words that should maybe be real words but aren't. <laughs> From now on, they will be. Yeah. If you if you oh, Google it, it'll be, in the, it'll be in the dictionary eventually. Um, so maybe tell tell us a little bit about how you how you begin a painting like this, and you know yeah. what your thinking is, how you make it. Uh, the painting, like something like this, is probably a, a, lo a lot of it. A lot of them happen over the course of like a, a year or two. They can sit in the studio, and there's a lot of underpainting. Um, I'll start, I'll make some of this figurative, I'll start making characters, just throwing paint and start seeing where things kind of fall and I start looking for shadows and kind of like, you know, strange characters and things to kind of forms and shapes that present themselves. I don't really start out saying I'm going to like make a painting of a tree or do a painting of a car or a person. I kind of just like watch the paint and, uh, and I follow the paint and the stains and, and start to like pick up on it and then develop it and then I'll think it's great and I'll look at it the next day and I hate it and then I'll repaint over it and then I'll start to see some stuff come underneath the surface, things start to, certain things will, will rise, other things will fall and I'll just follow that. I kind of, I, I kind of like try to let, let them take me. I try to follow the, that, the light. I try to follow the, the urge and the colors and the swirl of it all. I don't really ever set out to like make anything specific. And so something like this was probably three or four paintings before it became that thing. Um, and the sort of evidence of the previous three or four paintings is sort of what comes through. Yeah, I mean a lot of times even with if with some of the canvases they'll be it'll be like caked on. It'll be just like and you won't even really know what's underneath there, but I like the idea that you can like feel it. That there's something that you can like sense that was that was there. Again, I feel like there's an energy even to the underpaintings. There's something. It's hard for me to pull off like flat surface art. Is it's it's, it's I find that difficult. The ger you know that kind of German painting. It, it's great. I love it, but I I just can't really do it. Yeah, we talk, I mentioned earlier that idea of the call and response. And when I was in your studio, there were like tarps. Yeah. Raw canvas on the floor, people walking on them, yeah. treating them terribly, you know, spraying yeah. things, just plopping things down on it. And if there were footprints on it, that didn't matter. And so yeah. you would have this, it, it seemed like it, it gave, you, gave you something to, to respond to. 
yeah. in the same way that you know Leonardo talked about clouds, yeah. you know, or or you know the the, the frottage yeah. of the surrealists, this yeah. idea that you need you need an, an impetus. Yeah, I can't. It's difficult for me to just like look at a blank canvas and just know oh, I'm going to make a painting. I it, I like things that have markings on them that kind of like start to uh, speak to me. Um, and uh, I try to find it. It's a pro it's like a process, you know. This is another one of my favorites of yours. This is Mini Sitter. And I th it's yeah. it's pretty cool. It's a small painting again, and it has that same sense of uh, call and response. In this case, you sort of laid out a grid yeah. of photographs, and then yeah, I haven't shown these yet. Together. I had did a series. These are like from about five or six years ago. There were I, I used to call them loop paintings, and they were just they were basically like weed. They were photographs that I had taken a lot of in Nashville. Some of them were actually like this was like the, these photographs were like the impetus to what became Trash Humpers. This was just my assistant with like a cheap mask, and I would go I would walk around. These photographs became what would become Trash Humpers. Well, this is what started the idea. Okay. I would dress up my assistant at the time, Scott, and we would just go out late at night, and he and into the alleyways in Nashville wait, and I would just have my camera with a flash and I would just be like hump that trash thing and <laughs> and, and then I just take pictures of Scott him. Scott was happy to comply. Humping huh? trash. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, and I started looking at the photographs and there was something creepy about them and interesting and I was like whoa there's I don't know what it was and so that's where the idea for the movie trash humpers yeah. came from from that and then I would make paintings that were basically like they were like loops so I would just use one or two images per painting, sometimes just one, and just kind of, uh, and have them kind of looped in, in, these, in these grids. And then this is like house paint. Uh, some of the house paint we would get from the houses that we would, you know, break into or whatever and just. You broke into houses? Well, not really, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> creeped around the back. This is one of my favorite paintings in the show, and talking about loops and that idea of repetition. And also, the, you know, the title of the show is, is Shadows and Loops, and this uh, notion of something behind the surface. And I've been looking at this painting and looking at this painting, and you know, it's a very physical thing. You can see the, the material that you apply to the surface of it, and it's, uh, yeah. and it's, it's really weighty. You know, it reminds yeah. me, we've talked a little bit about um, Thornton Dial. Yeah. You know, you saw the Thornton Dial show here, yeah. and of course, Anne Brown used to show. Yes. Uh, I don't know. She probably still does yeah. at the Arts Company, and you know, and I think that sense of that, yeah. that physicality is something that really is. Uh, no, totally. Uh, it was here, like yeah. you know, being a kid here and like like seeing people spray paint stuff on the sides of barns, and you know, you know, when there was that kind of like rural abstraction, just like looking in the back of alleyways and seeing like drips falling from air conditioner vents onto, you know, whatever it was. Uh, you, you just start to see things that kind of were happening organically in the, in the city or around the city that were interesting to me. Um, graffiti that would just kind of melt mm. and stuff. I started to see a kind of weird poetry in it, a, a kind of a strange, Oh, it's like a, a kind of American vernacular in the in that stuff, and the, some of the paintings like this have that kind of melted, warped. Again, like they're not really ever finished; they're always kind of, you know, they're they're in motion, they're dissolving, they're, you know, there's no fixed point to them. Yeah, and that's something that I think is that sense of instability and unfixedness is something that. You, connects everything that you do, it seems to me. Yeah. Um, even these paintings, when you look at it online, it looks kind of clean. Yeah. You know, but then when you look at it close up, it's really grungy and slimy. Yeah. And, you know, you can see the touch. That's my style. Huh? That's your style. <laughs> yeah, can't yeah, help yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about one more thing. We've, we've just about run out of time, believe it or not. I thought we would be, like, out of things to say in 20 minutes, but... Um, um, You've done some music videos, which oh, I yeah. think is kind of cool, and, and it certainly is something that is of interest to our audience. You've done uh, work with, uh, with local musicians. Um, uh, this is a uh, Rihanna video, which uh, if you haven't seen it, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty intense. It's like a three minute long full length movie. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, and then you've got, um, you know, you did Spring Breakers, which was uh, from 2010, I think. 
of 13. 2013. Um, and they kind of, there's a similar quality. The, the, the production value is different, I think, from what you mm -hmm. have been doing in the past. Mm -hmm. And I assume that has to do with more collaborators, more, mm -hmm. more people you have to please or mess with or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing that is interesting to me, too, is the, um, the storylines become more clear. Yeah. And the storylines in both of these, and this may just be a coincidence, yeah. have to do with, they're very sort of erotic, mm -hmm. but they're also, they're, they're revenge and mm -hmm. they're violence and they're women mm -hmm. sort of taking things mm -hmm. into their yeah. own hands and, and yeah. you know, doing the same things that we sometimes associate with in the case of Spring Breakers yeah. with, with four men criminals, sure. but these are four women criminals. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I think it's kind of, hard to know whether there's a, a, a message or an yeah. idea there or you know what what yeah. does is is there kind of a, a turning point for you here a turning point in the movies or in the, the movie in your work and your thinking probably i mean it's just like it's just like a different phase in my life different way different types of images i want to see different colors and and uh storylines and uh starting also to de develop the way I think of movies and a certain push in a certain direction um, uh, it's, it's it's yeah this is just like a new a, a different phase from the uh, from the other um, yeah do you see any relationship to where you'll go with painting or is it complete starting to yeah, I do I see things in the colors and the again in the repetition and the, like the the loops and that a kind of the hip, the hypnotic quality. <laughs> yeah, this is these uh, last two are also among my favorite works, and you know they're very, again they're very clean and sharp, yeah. and um, there's an immediacy yeah. to them. But also this gets back to that that word you used earlier, that word called you know, of spirituality. Yeah. And you know I don't really know. You know, you never know yeah. what's there and what's not there, but there is that sense, is this yeah. sense of power and luminosity yeah. and of, uh, there's a floating quality, yeah. you know, kind of a getting away, a liquid quality to these works. Um, mostly, I just don't even really know what I'm doing. And, I mean, I really don't. Like, I just, I just know what feels right. I don't really know how to do anything. I just, like, I just kind of, like, I don't know how, I, I just... If it feels right, I just I see something. I'm like, wow, that has, that speaks to me in a certain way or something. I'm like, I just make it happen. But I don't really know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll like look back at some of these paintings and things, and I'm like, I I don't even know if I could ever make it again. I don't know how. Do you know? I don't I don't know if that makes sense. But I don't know. But a lot of times, like I just, it just happens in the moment, um, and then I look at it almost like a stranger looks at something, and. I'm not exactly sure how I made it, and I can't make it again, but it's just like, it exists like that. That's a spirit. I think that's a great place to, um, to stop our conversation and ask you all if you have any thoughts or questions of Harmony. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, how's it going? All right. Whoa, that's messed up. Um, I love Jello. It's been an influence in my life. I did have a hard time with Spring Breakers. I just want to know what that kind of journey was going through production and then the post, how that kind of all started. Because it feels a lot different. Yeah. Yeah. And that was so, like, I got a little lost in that environment. Right. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really know. I just made it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Hey, you know, some things speak to you, some things don't. I don't know. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, man, Mark Gonzalez is, uh, he's one of my best friends. He, he, he's a like huge influence, just, um, him as a skateboarder, 
was was art, is art, and just his whole way. He was one of the first my first people I really started hanging out with uh, in New York when when I first moved there. But for us growing up in Nashville, skaters back then, he was kind of like a real idol for us. You know, he changed the way Mark in a lot of ways changed, like completely altered our way we thought of not just skateboarding, but of just like the world, you know? All of a sudden he was doing tricks on his grip tape, on some riding down handrails and stuff on his grip, you know, and just like, it, it, you saw that and they were like, well, you started to see everything is possible or there aren't really rules. And um, Mark was like a real, is like a real innovator. And he became like my roommate. We lived together. He was, in, he's like a real nut. And uh, we would make, you know, back in the day, we'd just make zines all night and draw and make, we would smoke these George Byrne cigars, wear turtlenecks and turn the heat up. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He, he's awesome. He's great. Any other questions? Yes. Not really. I mean, I, maybe, I, maybe there is. I hope there is. Uh, I, I, but again, I, don't, I didn't know because I didn't put myself out there in that way. Like, I wasn't like doing studio visits and things. And so I don't, I don't know. Maybe there is. I don't really know anything uh, about Nashville art, really. Um, the, what was the other question? Uh, just porn, really. <laughs> well, not that I didn't pay attention. You mean, I don't, yeah, not really. <laughs> Yeah, no, I never have. I've never been to one gallery, and and I've never actually, uh, I've never seen one artist. <laughs> my I, my friend James is here, uh, Clower, and he he was a I grew up with him. And he was a great artist. He used to draw like these little, like, kind of, porno pictures on the notebooks. <laughs> Dorf Wall? Dorf Wall? That's a place? Nerf Wall? I don't know if I've ever been to North Nashville. Where is that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. I'll check it out. That's cool. I've never been. I've never seen art here. No, I, I'm just being serious. I really don't know anything about it. Oh, Mike Carney. I forgot about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll keep that. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? Hometown crowd. <laughs> uh, Sylvia? Street art? Uh, yeah. Well, like graffiti and stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, if, yeah, it's like, if it's good, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't really do graffiti. I mean, when I moved to New York, there was this kid next to me named Benny. He was this uh, Mexican kid. And he was a great graffiti writer. He, and he, he, he convinced me to like uh, start like tagging on um, name tags. 
And I was like, all right. I'll go. And I went out with him one night, and I started putting my name on tags, and some dude like, hit me in the head with a hammer. <laughs> that was like the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to go check out that place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'll check it out. That's cool. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. I don't know. Uh, craziest experience with Gucci Man? Um, geez. That's a tough one. <laughs> They're all crazy. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Maybe like the time I, when I was directing him and he felt there was like a sex scene and he fell asleep while the girl was boning him. <laughs> all right. I think on that uplifting note. <laughs>